Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This 25-year-old woman has a complaint of mild temporomandibular joint pain and bruxism. Accurate casts, properly mounted, constitute an important aid in the analysis of functional occlusal relationships and facilitate the diagnosis and treatment planning for patients with occlusal problems. Careful clinical analysis of occlusion should always proceed and be part of the analysis of the mounted cast. The simple procedures for mounting casts illustrated in this movie will provide the essential information that can be gained from mounted casts, even though technical limitations regarding reproduction of complicated jaw movements in articulators tends to restrict the significance of all articulator analysis of occlusion. Essential equipment needed for mounting the casts is shown. It consists of a semi-adjustable articulator, a face bow, soft green wax, hard base plate wax, thermometer, plaster bowl and spatula, knife, strong cotton string, a hand mirror, an indelible pencil, a wax instrument, and a ruler. Carefully inspect the cast for imperfections. Pay particular attention to accurate reproduction of details in the occlusal anatomy. See if the casts fit together tightly. In this instance, there appears to be a rocking between the casts which could be caused by an artifact. Test the articulator to see if it allows free movements. Set the incisal pin at the zero level and the incisal table flat. Adjust the lateral setting of the articulator to 15 degrees for both sides and the condylar setting to 30 degrees. Tighten the lock screws and be sure there is no play in the condylar mechanism. The conventional hinge axis is located by measuring with a flexible ruler from the middle of the tragus of the ear to the outer canthus of the eye and placing a mark with an indelible pencil 13 millimeters in front of the border of the tragus. The ruler should barely touch the tragus and the mark should be made as a right angle cross to make it easy to center the hollow arms of the face bow. The patient is instructed to bite lightly into several layers of base plate wax which has been wrapped on a bite fork. This is chilled, trimmed free of any soft tissue contact, and replaced in the mouth. The patient, biting into the occlusal imprints, should hold the fork firmly. The face bow is centered over the cross marks, and the front set screw tightened. If there has been a change in the position of the condylar tubes during the tightening procedure, the screw mechanism should be loosened and the face bow readjusted. The face bow is centered in the articulator. The readings on the arms of the face bow are made identical for both sides. Be sure that the mounting plates are screwed firmly to the articulator. 
The bite fork should be approximately in the middle of the articulator. Place the cast, which has orientation grooves, carefully into the wax on the bite fork. Use impression plaster or stone to mount the cast. Remove the bite fork after the plaster has set. Raise the incisal pin two to three millimeters to compensate for the thickness of the centric relation record. A narrow strip of hard base plate wax is placed in a bowl of hot water while attempts are made to obtain relaxation of the jaw muscles in preparation for the recording of centric relation. When an unimpeded relaxed closure in the retrusive hinge path can be achieved, the softened strip of wax is folded over once and swiftly placed on the patient's maxillary teeth. Then the operator moves the mandible up and down on the retrusive hinge path. Don't have the patient bite. The operator alone should move the mandible. Maintain a steady distal pressure on the mandibular teeth while the wax is being trimmed to expose the incisal edges and cusp tips. Keep steady pressure on the mandible while the wax is being chilled. If this is not done, Involuntary muscle contractions triggered by tooth sensitivity to cold might easily distort the wax record. This wax bite is removed and chilled further in cold water. The record is replaced on the maxillary teeth and the mandible guided into centric relation to see if the closure is identical to the record. All the teeth should make solid contact with the wax. The centric wax record and the mandibular cast are placed on the mounted maxillary cast. The mandibular cast is pressed firmly into the wax record and tied to the articulator with a cotton string. The string should be tied as taut as possible. This secures a firm, well-defined position of the casts. The cotton string is cut away. Impression plaster or stone is also used to attach the mandibular cast to the articulator. After the condylar locks have been loosened, the wax record is removed and the incisal pin raised. The articulator occlusion demonstrates an initial contact and slide in centric, similar to that observed in the patient's mouth. The patient is rehearsed in bringing the mandible into a protrusive position while looking in a hand mirror. Orientation marks placed on the anterior teeth help to guide the patient into a straight protrusive closure. Softened folded base plate wax is placed on the teeth. The patient is guided into a closure short of occlusal contact at a protrusive position about three to four millimeters anterior to centric occlusion. The excess wax is carved away to expose the incisal margins and cusp tips. The wax is chilled and removed from the mouth. It is carefully observed to be sure there has been no tooth penetration of the wax. The thoroughly chilled wax is placed on the mounted cast. The condylar guidance screws are loosened so the maxillary and mandibular casts can be seated in the protrusive record. After the casts are seated, 
the condylar screws are tightened and the condylar guidance is established. This completes the cast mounting procedure. However, the mounting must be checked for accuracy. Narrow strips of 28 gauge green casting wax are placed between the teeth and the mandible tapped into light tooth contact at centric relation. This should be done for both sides, either separately or simultaneously. New strips of wax are placed on the occlusal surfaces of the casts and the casts tap together in centric relation. The patterns of perforations and near perforations of the wax from the articulator mounting and from the mouth are then compared to assure an accurate duplication of contact patterns. The most desirable occlusal bite plane covers all of the maxillary teeth and provides stops for all opposing mandibular teeth. Clasps can be placed for retention. With the bite plane securely in place, there should be cuspid guidance in lateral excursions. There should be no incisal guidance except for the lift provided by the cuspid guidance. There should be freedom of centric. Note the smooth gliding movements in the various lateral and protrusive excursions. Bite planes can be adjusted by the use of carbon paper and or wax. The patient should be induced to make every possible contact movement on the bite plane. Retrusive as well as lateral and protrusive movements. Note the marks of contacts on the occlusal surface of the bite plane, indicating stable contact with all of the opposing teeth. Eliminate all occlusal guidance and roughness on the surface of the bite plane, except for the cuspid guidance one to two millimeters away from the centric stop marks. Adjust the bite plane with a large wheel type stone to make the surface as flat as possible and still maintain centric stops for all opposing teeth. The surface should be polished. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.